Welcome to our session from Transaction to Insight uh, with S4 HANA and positioning with other solutions, SAP Analytics Cloud and uh, BW4 HANA. I'm Anirban Kundu. I'm the responsible product manager for S4 HANA Embedded Analytics. I've been with SAP now close to 14 years and last six years have been with Fiori Journey, Sweet on HANA, transitioning to S4 HANA. So it's like basically the evolution of the entire digital stack, what we have been doing. Uh, some of you who might have been working on Sweet on HANA would know like, you know, the calc views and then we shifted to S4 HANA. So have been with those multiple iterations. Uh, typical disclaimer now. Quickly coming to the agenda. So what do we have planned for today? Now, one of the thing is, you know, analytics is a term which is, I would say, you know, pretty much an all encompassing term. Yeah, so you pretty much put everything in analytics and everything is intelligent today. So what I would like to do is take a step back and describe what is the analytics for us in this context and maybe you know make it real that when you go back tomorrow to your organization what are the tangible steps you could take to actually go towards the vision yeah so that's the first part second is uh, well s4 hana comes with a lot of embedded analytics capability by default so if you just have an s4 hana you have you know, 800 plus apps which are ready to be deployed. There are more than 50 plus apps which are already tagged with machine learning. So there's a lot of content, there are key user tools. So one of the aspect would be today to uh, show you all these artifacts which are out of the box for S4, for which you don't need to do anything, yeah? Then we will have is, uh, well, what you have with S4, how can you extend your scenario with Analytics Cloud? How would you interact with the BW for HANA? And finally, the most interesting piece of the session would be sneak preview of what we will be launching in 1911, which is actually the SAC, Analytics Cloud, embedded right within S4. That's what you hit, uh, saw in the keynote. Now here I will take you a little bit details on the sneak preview of what is coming next and you know then it will be for you to decide that how does it you know take your journey to s4 okay with that little bit of context now as i said let's uh, analytics means you know different things to different people now i started back in analytics about 18 years ago now 18 years ago analytics was more synonymous was problem solving yeah so I had the use cases when I write out the college, when I joined, um, I was solving problems like we have a, you know, like a hotel or an airline, you have a perishable inventory and you want to see that how can I, this is, this is the flight which will depart in next uh, uh, day. So how will I do the pricing for the flight? Yeah. So we used to do problems like, okay, how will I price when it is a perishable inventory? Should I put it low, should I put it how, how does it correlate with the demand? So pretty much synonymous with problem solving. Now back in the days, this was, and the second problem was, you know, you were doing manufacturing resource planning and you are doing just uh, taking the material and the capacity constraint together and using a linear optimization algorithm. That was the state of the art 18 years back, yeah? And we were focusing on Okay, the another retail problem was, uh, you know, if you go to a retail store and you see these offers, buy one, get one, yeah, or buy two, get one, or uh, various discounts. So we were doing a lot of these price optimization. Now fast forward 15 years, and I go into any discussion with analytics, it's like most of the time people are talking about, okay, have you been working with this support vector machine? You know, do you know there's gradient boosting, random forest? So it's a lot of jargon which is coming now. The business value is somehow overpowered with a lot of jargon with respect to the technology. And then you're saying, okay, now, you know, how many, what, what's the GPU, what's the algorithm? And, you know, kind of, you know, are you running a data lake? So what I want to set here is, now when you go back and define a data strategy or analytic strategy, one very important thing is, you know, the perspective is, you have a value-based perspective where you are saying, okay, what is the problem I want to solve? And namely the three issues which I said can be solved with different 
algorithms and technology, one technology doesn't fit for everything. And that's the problem. And that's why where you see that, you know, that's where the scenario comes in like, oh, why does SAP has so many tools, yeah? And then I am looking towards more standardization, but the nature of the problem. If you look at a problem which is the airline pricing, a retailer giving an offer, or a manufacturing company uh, doing the manufacturing resource planning, yeah? And with the data set coming in, so you see that, you know, it's just not one simple problem. There are multiple use cases, and because of these use cases, you have a different solution, yeah? And this is the context which I want to set. This simple slide is basically entire SAP portfolio, yeah? You have seen this in multiple presentations. Now, I would just like to concentrate on what I will be doing here. We are focused on the little piece, the O data. Now, within the operational data, we will be focusing on the S4 HANA. Now, important piece is, while it's just mentioned O data, yeah, and it says intelligence is outside, but I would like to also, uh, you know, present that there is actually a lot of intelligence within this O, which is out of the box with S4. So that will be one key takeaway, and I hope to you know uh, demonstrate that in my demos and videos next. Now, once you have this O data, next is, as I said, based on the use cases. So we will decide what is the use case, and then with the use case, what do I do? When do I bring in analytics cloud? When do I bring in the data warehousing scenario, when do I need a data warehousing cloud as such? So then we will explore a little bit on that. And on the, we will explore this business technology platform and we will be touching on the analytics a lot because this is where the next innovation we have made is actually embedding the SAC into the S4. And this will be the key highlight and the key pillar which we'll be talking about. Another thing will be, as I said, we will make your journey tangible towards the intelligent enterprise. So first of all, if you're doing simple analytics like, you know, sales quotation overview. So how can we infuse some machine learning into it? How can we get some predictive there? And then next step is get it conversational. So this will be the second piece. We have a short demo for that. So how do you take your regular analytics application and infuse it with the technologies like conversational AI, machine learning. So those that's the second piece. These will be the highlight. We will touch upon a bit on the database uh, and you know the scenarios which is outside of the O data, wherein what is the limitation of the embedded analytics and when really the boundary stretches and you need a data warehousing solution. So these are the three things we will be talking about. Now, so the first part, embedded analytics in S4. This is your O. Within the O, what do we get? So very quickly, before we get into the O, there is, has been, as I said, you know, a big transition of S4. So there has been like, okay, why S4? What's the migration? You know, simple value drivers. We have our modern architecture, the user experience, and the next generation business process. This also you might have seen in number of presentations in S4. Now, what of this are the tangible examples we want to show you? We want to show you the data availability real time. Yeah? Now we want to show you, let's take you start up with a analytic process, aggregated, then you go into a certain drill down, and from that drill down you want to get into a transaction. You really filter that transaction and get into an individual business uh, object or an individual process order, sales order. So how this chain is made possible with S4 HANA Embedded Analytics, that's one key piece which we'll be showing. And as I said next, you have your regular analytic applications like, uh, you know, I want to just predict the supply delivery. Now, the supplier delivery, how can I augment it with more machine learning and augment with conversational AI? So that's the third piece. One of the best pieces, I have been doing a number of, uh, you know, apart from product management, I was going to a number of customers and number of partners as well. And sometimes, though I said, you know, I have been, this product is almost three to four years, which is, you know, if I talk 1511 was the first S4 HANA release, now it's the fourth year. But to my surprise, and 
this is not out of the fantasy. It's like sometimes the discovery of embedded analytics tool set is absolutely not there in the projects. We still go and we say that people are working on GUI and they said, you know, we needed, we, have, we, we did this transformation. We have these, you know, thousand plus reports which we were working on our ECC and now we don't know what's happening, what is the tool, what have you provided and, you know, how do we go about and, you know, uh, what do we do? And then, you know, we run into escalation and then I said, okay, did somebody tell you that, you know, there is one simple role and if you just put it into your uh, Fury launchpad, you get really a lot of tool sets. You can actually, you know, have all these standard apps, the key user tools. They said, oh, you know, nobody pretty much told us that. Yeah? And this is the scenario even after four years. So that's where I want to, you know, take a little bit of time saying that, okay, what is right out of the box? When you do this move, normally what I have seen is these move typically become a technical migration, yeah? You're doing a technical migration at that point in time, the analytics or the data strategy is always pushed as phase two, yeah? And, and that becomes really a challenge because you have to do your analytics and data strategy when you are doing a move as part of phase one because intelligent analytics or intelligent enterprises are vision. How do you go towards that vision? If you're not even doing analytics, how do I even become an intelligent enterprise? Yeah, so see the disconnect. So we see, okay, we implemented S4, we did this, we spent, you know, hundreds of, uh, well, in some cases, could be millions of dollars and a lot of consulting effort hours and man days and you did all simplification, CVI, business partner, everything, transformation, navigate, and then the CIO or, you know, the CFO and the business comes and where's my value? You know, I was getting this report previously and, you know, you spent so much money, I don't see any value. Where, how am I becoming intelligent? Well, we didn't activate analytics. Without analytics, it's like, you know, simple pattern. If you are not analyzing what you are doing, how will I make a pattern? If I can't make a pattern, I cannot learn. If I cannot learn, what will I share with others? So this is a big gap which I want to... Uh, present that, you know, the journey to intelligent enterprise or the vision starts with very small step called embedded analytics. We need to have embedded analytics as your part one or in the, when you go back to the drawing board as the first step in your uh, planning. Other things, so what does, what are the key ingredients? First of all, you know, when we, most of us are, you know, average consulting SAP, we have as I see, sometimes, you know, average uh, 10 plus years of SAP experience and then things like VBAP, VBAK, MARA, MACT, these are like common vocabulary for us, yeah? Anybody says KOSTL, yeah? Immediately, oh, cost center. So, you know, we have been working with these cryptic tables for so much time, yeah? Now, imagine a new, we were doing you know, we have to build this new software. We onboarded new college graduates and said, you know, we need to build a financial application. So he said, okay, well, where's the cost center I look? Well, it's a German abbreviation. You have to go to this metadata dictionary. You have to find that there is this cost which is the, well, it worked before because, you know, and I must really appreciate the SAP consultants because that entire, it's a dictionary. You know, it's like an, if you were speaking English, it's the Oxford dictionary and you have memorized that Oxford dictionary, yeah? So that's what you have done in past. Now what we did is, you can really, these new guys will not memorize these Oxford dictionary, yeah? So what did we say is, then we really need something enriched with semantics, yeah? We want to have cost center as cost center, we want to have billing document as billing document and enrich, semantically enriched uh, business object. What it means is what it is, yeah? No cryptic term. So the first thing with S4 is really the vi virtual data models, yeah? Now this is very important. Now this is for your all S4, yeah? Anything you do with S4, you want to do, you know, sometimes it's like we want to run before we start crawling, yeah? Like, a, so that's our expectation that, you know, in the projects, and most of the time we are always starting T minus 
two months behind or some months behind. And then it's like, okay, let's get started. But first, let's understand that you need to understand what this virtual data model is, because once you understand this virtual data model, then only you will have this integration with Analytics Cloud or with BW or with any other data source. So let's take a minute to understand this virtual data model, which is your basically the heart of S4. Yeah. And important thing is, it makes it easier. So it is like a new college graduate or you know your new team can ramp up faster, can see that, okay, now I am interested in building a financial application. This is what it means, and this is your, uh, you don't need to memorize, and this is like a very enriched semantic model. Now next, next is a very different working model is we do not touch the database tables directly in S4 world. If you are making a report, you are doing a report on an abstraction, yeah? Most of the time, what is, we are not touching a direct table because, you know, in that case, you would pretty much, let's say five different people were to make on a same table, and there were so many customization. How do you standardize? How do you put it in a, if you're looking from a cloud perspective, how do we standardize? The first thing for standardization is that how can I drive reuse? And therefore, a lot of this stack of models is basically you, what you see, we have, you know, for semantically enriching, the tables are, we have the stack of views, you have I views, then we have the reuse views, and finally for analytics, we have something called as consumption views, and then this consumption views becomes the center point for you to start with any analytics, yeah? Any predictive, anything which you want to do, your journey starts with this virtual data model and understanding this stack, yeah? You cannot deliver value if you don't uh, go through this stack, yeah? And second thing is, this is the same stack. If I want to make applications in cloud platform, then I'm taking an external API. These are the A APIs. So this is, this is your basically uh, the heart of S4 and the CDS, and it is, core data services, yeah, available for all type of consumers. Now, this is something, you know, which will look like, so this is your C views, and uh, so you know how many CDS views SAP has shipped? Yeah, it's more than 34,000 plus CDS views which are available, yeah, and then how do you make sense of those 34,000 CDS views and all these stack of views? And most important thing is, can you, can you build reports on all those 34,000 views? Well. That's the catch. You can only build report only on roughly 2,400 CDS views, yeah? And that's something, you know, what you see is the consumption view, release view, that's something which I'll show you quickly in the system what it is, yeah? To summarize, you have the cryptic tables were wrapped up with a virtual data model, and to drive reuse, we have this stack of VDMs, and this becomes now the foundation for all the analytics we will be doing. Okay, so here we have uh, the architecture, and, and this is the picture where it integrates with different solution, yeah? One most common question is, why did we introduce the ABAP layer, yeah? You had been, if you were doing the uh, virtual data model, core data services, the one important thing was, you know, you had like CalView and then uh, you didn't have any ABAP layer, okay? So the question was, when you did S4, you went back to ABAP. Now, why do you need that ABAP layer? You need the ABAP layer because, one, is if you would have done, you know, the transports of objects, you know, lifecycle management from the native HANA application which you are building, this was difficult, yeah, because you had two different lifecycle management. Now, you can use your regular ABAP lifecycle management to, you know, move your objects from, Q to P, uh, dev to Q to P as such, yeah? so life cycle management. Second, very important is, I knew of a couple of projects which are stopped because you know, there were 50,000 users, and the authorization, you had to provide double authorization, yeah? Now authorization, and, and with ABAP, basically what you are doing with your standard PFCG authorizations, they get transported onto the CDS and you don't need to build any other authorization layer, which is very, very important in the cloud world when you expose the data to several pieces. Now the first thing is the inbuilt security. So lifecycle management, your 
security, your authorization, and one most important thing is even the translation, yeah? Today you make this object, but you know, you have companies working across several countries and you want in different uh, languages. So then you have this uh, pretty much, uh, how do you do uh, translation? Now, couple of things. Now, why I want to bring it here is two magic happens when this uh, data model is exposed. Now on one side, S4 HANA has an embedded BW, okay? So that's why the question comes in, okay, can I not do all my BW? I was anyway doing this operational reporting. Can I not do everything out of this? You have a BW engine out of an S4. Now, well, why we use this BW engine is because this, whenever you mark something as a, uh, the, the view as a query, it gets automatically interpreted by the analytical engine, and then it is available to all your BI suite, yeah? So BI suite is, so if I want to do a live connection between S4 HANA and SAC, the first important thing that is made possible because we have this analytical engine which takes the CDS view, converts it into something called as a transient provider, which is interpreted by the SAP, uh, uh, SAC in a live connection. Now, second thing is, okay, what about my other BI portfolio of tools? If I want to use in, you know, uh, my, whatever I've been using currently on Design Studio and you know, all the other BI tools analysis for Office. Well, that same technology works because the transient provider can be interpreted by your uh, SAC and that's the same thing which you work with your, uh, all your BI portfolio tools. So that's one side where we take the data out. Now, second thing is you want, you have seen a lot of nice Fiori applications and other things. Now, just one magic keyword which is OData published true, that's it. Now once this magic keyword is associated with that big view, immediately it is available for you to create your applications. Normally when I do these workshops, it's like, okay, how much time would you take to make a, a report like this? And the question could be, you know, it could vary from days to some weeks also. But if you do that magic keyword and you know the right tools, you could do your KPI and report modeling in under 30 minutes, yeah? So that's really one important thing I want to uh, take as a key, uh, important uh, takeaway from this session is that leverage the key user tools and you can build your all these Fiori reports and apps which you see on top in less than 30 minutes and that's actually uh, brings us to the tool set. So you just need to activate the role analytics specialist to your user, and then you get all the key user tooling which is available in S4 HANA as such, yeah? Very important, and this is, once you activate this, this is what I said, a magic keyword on top of CDS, all your reports and KPI under 30 minutes is what you can do. Well, the most of the time is taken in your data modeling, yeah? Data modeling and creating your CDS model, seeing that it is the right one. So once you have that, that's a bigger chunk then it's easy. All the UI stuff is like creating your apps will be like with the key user tools, 30 minutes, yeah? You could do that as well. Now, apart from that, as I said, we have been shipping a lot of content, yeah? There are this uh, best practice explorer and then we have this tons of these scenarios, best practices, all these scenarios. These are just some of the ones which we are putting with 1909, yeah? There is more than, you know, uh, hundreds of scenario which is like integration scenario. Some simple thing is each of them is abbreviated with uh, a code name and then it says, you know, analytical apps for sales and distribution. So what you could do is you could just take that best practice guide follow it step-by-step step guide and you could activate these scenarios in your systems. Now this one is a simple one. We called it the flexible analysis for sales quotation. It's like a, a, a you know, what we call is a data grid or multi-dimensional report or data analyzer where you can freely uh, move around the dimensions and you can get, uh, you know, if I'm looking at sales quotation and I want to understand across different dimensions and all, very easily you can bring that out. So this is something which is, and, and why I put it, because when I was doing my hands-on in Las Vegas, somebody said, you know, uh, a customer, is this a latest release which is coming in? Yeah, because we never saw this. Is it coming in 1909? I said, this was in 1511. 
15, 11. He said 15, 11, but the consultant who was, you know, talking to us never thought that these multidimensional reports can be done. Yeah? Okay. So, you know, that's somehow an extreme example also that why I brought this one out and not a very, very jazzy because most of the time you would have been seeing everything with machine learning and intelligence. Yeah? If you have done that, yeah, then you can come here. Yeah? Okay, so if you have activated analytics, now I'm talking of predictive supplied scenario. It doesn't work the other way around that, <laughs> getting the predictive and then the analytics, yeah? So have consumed those simple scenarios, and then you have this is out of the package as well. Now what is this? Now I'm monitoring my purchase order. You see there are two screens, first of all. So you would say that there's a simple analytical app, which is the, uh, which is the one, this is like an analytical list page. This actually you can do in under 30 minutes, where you have some filters, chart, and bar. Now with the KPI modeler, this kind of reporting you can do in 30 minutes, okay? This is out of the KPI modeler. This is what I want to show. Now, once you have made such kind of uh, basic reports like monitor purchase order item, you see there is a little bit on the top, which is basically the SAC. SAC is taking the this data model and creating a predictive model, yeah? And then I can attach. So let's say I'm talking about which supplier, would potentially delay in the delivery. Now I could say what has been, what is my normal report? I could take this data into, put it into SAC, and then I can train and get a model, and then I can take this model, tie it back with my regular plain vanilla application, and it becomes intelligent, okay? So that's one thing. Now, what I want to do is, uh, so let's start with, you know, how do we, the whole journey as such. So what you see here is something called as an overview page. And the scenario here is, uh, this is one of the standard app, uh, goods received invoice recognition. So first of all, there are two, you know, there are multiple pieces to this. First of all, it is your, just a simple app, which is your, uh, you have a embedded analytics, you have an overview page. Now, once you have a standard analytic apps, then you go into the transaction. You first isolate the problem, then you see, okay, what is, where is the reconciliation difference? And then we come the next stage where we get into the transaction and the system will propose that, okay, based on similar such activities, what I feel is, or what would be a, a better recommendation. And then you can lastly start with conversational AI. So I will just play this video and, you know, this is really the journey. So this is your simple analytics, as said. Now I'm just doing basic filters and I'm, this is an overview page. This is part of the embedded analytics. I'm just grouping, this is my regular analysis till now. I want to identify, okay, uh, based on my different cards, I want to drill down into the real data. Now this is your, this is, now, giving that, okay, what are the different elements which are, you know, all these uh, records which have an issue? And I could build out different filters here. And then I can choose, okay, which are the ones I am interested in and I want to work on the documents. So now, from the high level view, you get into the document format. Now, in this document format, then I can analyze what is the potential issue. So I could say, here for this document, the, I'm, I'm looking at what is the goods received, what is the invoice, now what is the difference, where does the invoice happen, and what's kind of the purchasing document history. So I can actually, because it's real time, you can tie it with this. And here's an important thing. Now, when I want to resolve it, now, if you see the recommended, now it says, okay, what are the different actions which you want to do? and uh, I want to do the correction of invoice. This is recommended, and this is very seamless. Now, this is the intelligence piece tied in, and what is the priority? It is recommended to keep this as high, and uh, root cause, and you see this is a percentage also, uh, difference quantity in invoice as such, yeah? So now, what we have is inbuilt, because this was tied with a model. Now, it said that given this kind of a problem scenario, this is your best case resolution. You could override it manually or you could follow the system. 
and then we get into the conversational, where we say, I want to start a new chat with the uh, purchase admin and you know, give him the context about this purchase order. Say, okay, you know, this is the order which I um, uh, want to uh, work with you. I see it has an issue and I can just, you know, it says you can just attach this object, purchase document item, yeah? And then it says, okay, I have sent the details. I could take a screenshot and say, okay, what is the difference? I believe there was a difference in the invoice and the history as such, yeah? So this now, then with the conversation, I can assign this uh, task for resolution to my coworker. Now, quick summary. Now, this is what I said. This is possible today, and many such apps are there. But you see there are this couple of journeys. So first of all, you started with your simple activating of embedded analytics. Now, once you have embedded analytics, now what was important is you could drill down from an aggregate view to your line level view, yeah? Because it is out of the same system. Now I can't get into the line level view. I could have all these different purchase order. I could differently slice and dice. And I am now narrowing down to a set of records, which I then want to do a certain transaction. Now when I'm doing the transaction, because the model has been analyzing your behavior, that how you have been doing it in the past, it recommends me the best possible action, yeah? and then I can assign that action. And it also proposes that because I have integration with the co-pilot and the conversational AI, it says, okay, if I have to collaborate with somebody, you know, I, don't, I, I can immediately send the context I'm working on, I can capture the screenshot, the business ob the, uh, object which I'm sending. And this is you know, something which is tangible, real, which you can go back tomorrow and you know you can work with these uh, and this really is your direction towards the embedded analytics yeah i guess i'm running a bit of time now what i wanted to show you was uh, okay so uh, very quickly so you know, this is the app which is called View Browser, which is the repository of all the applications which SAP has, yeah? So here, as I said, there's 34,000 views. Now, what are the different consumption views, what we can use? And then you can here, let's say I'm interested in sales volume. So it will give me what are the different, uh, well, somehow it, yeah. Uh, need to, yeah, one thing. Let's look at the released views. So these are the ones which you can actually make your analytics on, yeah? Now we will try again. Sales. Yeah, now it comes in. Now this query. So here, see, this is what what I said, you know, all your cryptic terms have been given a more uh, rich semantically understanding here. Uh, so, and the next thing is we have something called as, as I said, you know, two magic keywords, this OData publish when it was true. Now, basically, then it is available for the key user tools to consume and you could make it under 30 minutes. If it is not there, then you cannot do, not with everything. Now, what all queries, now if you have the analytics.query as true, then this will be available to your SSE system. So one of the thing, you know, you could say that, okay, now I have S4 HANA, I've connected it live with SSE and I should see all the 34,000 views. Well, you'll not see. Now, you'll not even see all the consumption view. What you see is anything which has been marked as query. And that is, uh, uh, that is basically what we have. And then if you see the cross references, then basically you could navigate across these uh, chain of views and this is what I was talking about. So if you see this C view, how it is, uh, the different view layers, till the time you get into your data. And then you could have something like as just uh, uh, what we call this uh, flexible analysis, multi-dimensional report, you could put in your UR and uh, 
you know then you pretty much get a drag and drop and you could you know this is something which is very simple right from 1511 which is there we be enhancing it uh, uh, now yeah what else uh, let's go quickly here now one of the thing is uh, if i go to here you see i have a story now here now i'm launching a from uh, this is the on premise integration i wanted to show you this first before i get into the this is from the fury launchpad i want to get into the ssc so now what i have is i have i have set up an on premise system and i have this ssc system which is there uh, it wants me to validate it again i thought maybe i'll show you something directly real in the system instead of some recorded video so uh, just bear with me while it just loads up so what you see here was you had your uh, uh, your fury launchpad you had a tile and this tile basically was launching a story now this is what you have currently as a, you know the on premise integration but i would like to show you the next which is coming up now here also uh, you know this is pretty much uh, you can embed anything now let's say i want to create my model and this is the live connection which i'm showing uh, with sse now i start from get from a data source one i have set in now this is the live connection so then i am connecting it now this is very important though we are connecting to s4 hana we are taking the source type as bw yeah because this is what i said you had the analytical engine within s4 which is powering this yeah and then this connection i get into my uh, connection for this now you look at all these data sources now these are all the uh in the view browser whatever was marked as query and then this is you know all the things now i can create the sales order actual flexible volume analysis and all this and voila this is my model creation i could create a new model in sse on top of live with whatever the data models are behind in s4 hana and i can get started with a story and i can embed it back yeah so this is your integration scenario one now coming back to the presentation uh well before that uh one moment will be that this is your latest cloud system this is the 1908 cloud system this is the fury 3.0 what is very important that you look in this uh, query design so there are what i said just uh, embedding uh, your analytics specialist will give you all these tools the view browser which is your rep uh, a repository for all your uh, data models then you have this custom analytical query yeah you have this custom analytical query if you want to create your own query you have uh, you want to create your own date functions that is possible you want to create new kpis so this is the new kpi modeler i want to show you this is earlier there were 12 apps now these 12 apps have been combined into one app and this is now the manage kpi app this is basically also the starting point for your integration with ssc story so this is your new modeler now this is the new kpi modeler and uh, here what you see is the different kpis you have the reports and this is a 1908 version available in 1901 uh, premise and then the reports now in the next one you will see that there is an ssc story the one which i just show you shortly i could create a different type of report so i could create these generic drill down the list page now this is what i said the list page which was under 30 minutes so if you have this now in the 1911 we have another drill down where i can say a data analyzer and i have a ssc uh, story so this is a critical piece that what we have is you know this is the tool set which is uh, uh, important for you to uh, when you go tomorrow back so you take that this is important now i'll well if everything is you know this is a question i get asked uh, or most of all if you can do so much out of uh, embedded analytics then you know what are the why do we need something else yeah now this was remember this was just the intelligence without even in the o only yeah not even the outside now then there will be the typical scenarios which you have you know you want to merge system 
data across multiple systems, across SAP, non-SAP, and other aspects. Now, that is your warehousing scenario. You want to do predictive planning. As I say, predictive, for your predictive, you would need the analytics cloud because there is where we are taking the S4 data and creating the model. So now, uh, you have then the need for this visualization layer for SSE, and I will not take the important aspect. SSE is more of one uniform visualization layer for your entire company, not only just covering S4, but success factors, all other, uh, all other LOB solutions, and other SAP, our non-SAP sources also. It's also embedded, so the embedded one is what I will show here. And let me just uh, quickly go you go through. So this is uh, your analytics. Uh, let's go to a yeah important. So how what is the best way to work together? Is the predictive now next which I want to show is the unique deep integration. So sometimes it's like from an SSE story. Can I actually jump into a Fury transaction? Is that possible? So that's what we made available with 1911. Now second thing is now you have your transaction, from that transaction, can I pass this context into the story? So that is the deep integration we want to show you. And then the security, obviously, what I mentioned initially, the authorization, we don't need to define any other authorization. This authorization is carried forward and the analytic catalog. Now, a uh, couple of very important functions of SSE is like the smart discovery. Yeah? Now, you take, let's say you take any CDS uh, view into the analytics cloud, and you say, I want to understand what are the key influencer, what are the, basically I take, uh, I, I take my revenue and then I want to, it will generate a story for you, where it will give you like what is the data distribution, what have been the key influencers for your revenue, any unexpected values, and finally you have certain simulation. So this is the boundary, something which is outside of embedded analytics. Yeah. So as I promised, what is possible within embedded analytics and what is outside of embedded analytics. So things like smart discovery, things like smart predict. Now remember what I said, uh, uh, so here, here's the thing. Now the simple applications in S4 HANA are enriched by machine learning. Here's the secret sauce behind. SSE has the smart predict. What I do is, I have this live connection, so I can take this data model into SSE, and I can say, okay, now in your my example of the predictive sales delivery, I took this uh, model back, uh, CDS into SSE, and then this SSE is saying, okay, I want to predict my delay, and then I just provide these uh, uh, parameters, and then what is my leading dimensions, and what will it do is, it will do this training set. Now, one important thing is, you know, and I kept a little bit of this, uh, uh, you know, the scrolling thing there, because sometimes the expectation is that training can also be done in seconds, yeah? But if you look back, training a model on, you know, thousands of purchase order and uh, sometimes 10,000 could take some time, yeah? So while we expect everything to be done in under sub-second, but there are some things which take their own time, yeah? So this training, well, it comes up, it's fast, and then what you have is you see that the confidence interval. And here's where you get in, it tells you how good this model is, what is important, and when you are, uh, when you are happy with the model, then you can tie this model and you say, okay, let's tie this model with the, the simple analytic application which was there, and then you made it intelligent, yeah? So this is where using the SSE, Smart predict, you are making these applications intelligent as such. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, another question was, we have a, you know, I will just go through this as you have seen multiple times. The thing is, you have an embedded BW in S4. Does that mean that, you know, we can do all the BW tasks and we can, you know, there, there was actually one a small partner out of, you know, they said we have just uh, decommissioned our BW because now we have S4 HANA. Yeah, and we're saying, okay, that's uh, really not what we suggested, but uh, somehow that message came. So this is absolutely a scenario which is not recommended. Yeah, you could have operational reports, a lot of the things can be done out of it, but BW is your answer for the standard warehousing questions, yeah? 
Now, I will jump through all this because I want to give you the glimpse of the latest integration. And the last five minutes, I will. Uh, so this was your architecture, what we saw. This was your integration with course. Uh, this is what we had previously. Now, I showed you already this, the tile opening the story. Now, the best part of the demo is what we are launching with 1911. And what you see here, this is your 1911 KPI modeler, which I had shown. And what will be possible here is, now this is a normal Fiori tile, which opens up an SSE story. Yeah, so no login, nothing, inbuilt, everything, all the security managed by SAP. This is a managed scenario. So I now get from a tile into an SSE story. I can create my variants as such. I can look at this various priority, what are the things, and all this is live on S4 data. The one, remember I showed you the live connection? So now what I'm doing is I am uh, doing a little bit of analysis here. Now create my own variants, returning back to the standard variants. Once I'm here, uh, most important thing is now from an SSE story, here is, let me just, yeah, pause here. So this is your navigation targets, yeah? So these are all the Fiori navigation. Uh, you could, you know, flexibly build in any navigation which you can want to go from this particular uh, story. So you had the Fiori getting into an analytic story which is completely embedded, managed by SAP and all the scenario there. And then you have from the story, you have the jump target. And uh, let's play this. So now you get into now all these apps and then you get into the standard Fiori application. Now here I can say what are the different uh, parameters as such and I could uh, see the filtering here. Okay, now rolling on. Now other thing which is important is creating the multi-dimensional report which I had shown you, yeah? So here we are creating a, SSE has the data analyzer, yeah? I showed you the multi-dimensional grid. Now this data analyzer is also now embedded within the, within the S4 HANA. So what you see here is you bring in the designer and you get your, uh, so if you see, I didn't log into any SSE. This is all embedded within S4. This is the OEM component. So all this design time of SSE is now available to you in the Manage KPI and Report app, which is part of the S4. Now I can make my own SSE grid as such and data analyzer here, yeah? So this is one thing. And then remember this Manage KPI and Reports app. This is what I said. You will have another aspect, which is the stories. And if I go to the reports, I can uh, create this data analyzer. So this is if I want to create a new uh, grid. This is possible through here. And finally, I can create, I can not only the runtime, but we have the design time of SSE embedded in S4 HANA. So I want to create my story. And once I start, so if you go to this configuration, this is an S4 screen, yeah? And now you have the SSE embedded. The real time, and I'm creating the, the entire design time is embedded in S4 HANA and you're creating your story router right out of this. For S4 HANA cloud customers, this is coming in 1911. There is no additional license as it was announced by Jürgen Muller in Las Vegas and well, success factors also. So all the embedded, this is all out of the box you know, without any extra license, this whole OEM component. So this is your, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, we are working on it as such. You know, it's a, a very good question. We have first bringing on the cloud and then we bring in on-premise. So this is what I wanted to really, you know, this is the sneak peek that how you have, and I'm just about time as well. So this is really where we are moving. So in nutshell, what I wanted to summarize is your journey towards enterprise, uh, intelligent enterprise starts small by actually having a very simple embedded analytics in your uh, you know, environment. Now, once you have the embedded analytics, you could have a lot of these predefined reports. Then 
you know, you're looking at something like an SSE integration, and, and this kind of an integration where you have the SSE, what you have said, in a 1911, jump targets, the grid, the design time embedded, and finally, you have seen how we enrich it with predictive scenario and, uh, you know, take it forward. So, uh, quickly, so here what you see is the tile to story to this, because this OEM component now comes part of the S4 HANA cloud. And this has now becomes an SAP managed scenario, so, uh, you know, when you just buy the S4 uh, cloud, 1911 onwards, so you don't need to do any configuration. Right now you are setting up all the SSOs and other things. Now this is, becomes an SAP managed scenario and all this configuration is done out of the box by SAP when it is delivered and you get all this. Now in terms of roadmap, deeper integration, we will be continuing. Actually one important thing is we are also planning that, uh, you know, right now for planning you are replicating. Maybe tomorrow we can do planning on uh, 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 real times, but this is just the vision for next year, so this is what we want to do. A uh, uh, couple of things, the slides are there. We are uh, investing heavily on this strategy, and we are uh, bringing in, this is all there in the roadmap as SAP, the connectivity and replication-free planning, which I already mentioned, improving the data connectivity as such, and uh, starting out the issues. Now, last thing, uh, you know, for your data extraction to BW, you have, you could use in the on-premise the standard S extractors, but you have the CDS-based extraction, there is the note, and uh, you have your, from the cloud data extraction also possible with the ABAP CDS views. Now, very quickly, you have, and, and the last thing, so what do we do here? So you understood the boundaries of embedded analytics, when do you need the uh, analytics cloud for your visualization, making it intelligent, and finally, the core, uh, the enterprise warehouse scenario, which you achieve with the BW. So with that, there are a number of videos. Now this link is already available. Now this is a nice video, it's a 10 minutes video. You can see the entire integration of S4 HANA with BW and SSE. This will be available and uh, let me point you some sources. Uh, yeah, so there are certain sources here. Now there's a book also we have and German edition and all this. With this, do give us your feedback and uh, feel free to, uh, you know, there are related sessions and feel free to contact me in case you have any questions and hopefully you enjoyed the session. Thank you.